Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, uh, many of you who play space games do it because you like flying spaceships. Others play it because you like exploring. So here I am in the ultimate exploring space game. Well, it's not really a game, it's more a sandbox. This is Space Engine. Uh, a system which is so incredibly complete, it starts out with uh, well, it starts out with the familiar planet Earth, and uh, as you go out, you can head practically anywhere in the solar system. What is the button I gotta push? Two, F1? No, that gives me the planet Earth. Uh, and that gives me object, ah, there we go. There's our solar system browser. I don't know why that wasn't happening. The, the engine is still in development, and it does appear to be buggy in places, but nonetheless, it's possible to say go to Mercury. Just click on it and travel to it. And there we go, let's hide it away. There we go, we have planet Mercury and we can use the right button to rotate or you can, you know, move it like a first person shooter holding the mouse button to uh, orientate yourself and using WSD to fly around and take a look at the surface. But the wonderful thing about this is it does, it goes to essentially, oh, it goes to essentially any scale. You can go out and you can search for things. You can search for the planet Io, right? Io. Uh, let's go there. Click go to. And there we are. That's the planet Io, volcanic moon on the surface, uh, volcanic moon in the Jovian system with its uh, volcanoes driven by the tidal forces between it and its partners. You can go further out. You can go to Orion Nebula. Go. The thing will take you out there, and there we go. The Orion Nebula, the stellar nursery where stars are being born and looking very pretty, of course. That's us flying around inside it. And you can go even further out. You can find the Milky Way. Uh, let's do this. Mil Milky Way. Go there. Of course we fly, there's the Milky Way. How beautiful is that, huh? Just right click and drag. There, and if you look around, there are actually neighbors. But that's, you know, that's nothing. Let's go back to Earth and see how, watch, watch us as, as we can zoom all the way out. This is one of the coolest things you can just do. Now go back to Earth, right? Everything flies by. And we shall start, do the Star Trek shot. Remember this opening to Star Trek The Next Generation? Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its ongoing mission to seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Oh wait, no one has gone before. I can't really do a good Picard. So yeah, by uh, rolling the mouse wheel up, I start to go faster and faster. I see the speed AU per second, hundreds of AU per second, and it's really running very slowly suddenly. I have no idea why that is, but it might be a sign that it's about to crash. There we go. Now we're at parsecs per second. You can see the stars around moving go a little faster. We start to see more stuff flying by, and this worked so much better earlier. Ah, okay. Apparently it has finished doing whatever it was doing. We're zooming out and just increasing speed all the time. 11.5 parsecs per second. The engines canna take it, Captain! You know, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is thousands and thousands of, hundreds of thousands, millions of times the speed of light. 47 parsecs per second. And we're still traveling through the Milky Way at this time. Soon we will fly out beyond the edge of the spiral arms into deep, deep intergalactic space. There's globular clusters there. The, the game models planets, moons, stars, comets, asteroids, dust clouds, nebula, globular clusters, galaxies, galactic superclusters, structure and all details in the le detail levels in the universe. And the, you know the cool thing about it is that essentially there's different algorithms for different detail settings. So you know galaxies get treated differently than other you know than other clusters. I guess there's different ways the random numbers are used. So it says flying out beyond the edge, continuing to go. Let's see how far out we can go here. There's our local cluster of galaxies. 
with a few globular clusters floating in space. Andromeda is nearby as well. You can fly straight to it. But you can just keep zooming out eventually. Five megaparsecs per second now. All these dots now, these aren't stars. These are galaxies. Galaxies with hundreds of billions of stars in them. Now we're starting to see galactic level structure. Some of this is derived from real survey data. Other, uh, as you go further out, it starts to make things up as it goes along. We don't have this level of detail. As we start to get further out, the galaxies get to... Well, the interesting thing is that it, it's really emulating the universe at this current epoch. So as you go further out, you don't start to see quasars, as far as I understand it. Because otherwise that would imply going back in time. And so there we are. Uh, we're beyond everything. Let's come back in. Let's go back in and find a random galaxy. What's this blob here? Let's pick this. And let's go there. It's a little fly. And so we've just picked the brightest thing that we could find. I have no idea what that is. It says it is a... Well, it looks like a galaxy, but I'm not sure what. Let's zoom in. Kiloparsecs per second. It just looks like a disc. Aha, no. Look, there's some stars that have been rendered. Let's pick... Uh, this one has 14 planets, so let's go here. Again, I've just picked totally... Oh, it's a binary, huh? Let's press F2 to see what we've got. We can view the barycenter, which is the center of mass of the system. Uh, the, the stars actually orbit around each other. Don't orbit around each other directly. They orbit around the center of mass. And the center of mass can actually be outside the center of the system. Let's take the B component of this binary. The fainter component has a number of planets. So uh, let's let's go to the star first. We can zoom down to it. There we go. Nice. You see like magnetic fields and everything there. Wow, that's pretty cool. It's just basically rendering these as planes, I guess. Let's see if I can see. Uh, is that? What's that? That Oh, that's cool gas. Oh, the cool gas giant. Let's go there. Because I like cool stuff. So, yeah, we've got a gas giant, and they've totally rendered this, you know, using procedural math and everything. Now, I guess there's a ring system here, isn't is there? Um, let's just, well, I guess I can just, yeah, they've got rings. That's kind of cool. I'm, I'm ruling the mouse button ran, <laughs> reflexively to adjust my zoom, and that isn't actually working. I guess this has been, has come, at, we've come at exactly the right time that these rings are edge on to the star. Is this uh, cold Selena? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, let's let's see if we can. Yeah, let's go to that thing. So I'm now just going to pilot manually. We're traveling at 0.7 speed of light. What is this then? Ooh, nice. Oh, flew through it. Darn. Uh, let's do the go to button. Let's see if that works. So come outside. Ah, there we go. So you know the, the su surface rendering has, has picked out a bunch of features for us, I guess. And you can fly in and it will start to render fractal landscapes. Hey, an interesting ejecta. I wonder why it is that color scheme. Well, I need to... There we go. Underneath the surface now. You can fly this in like aircraft mode, which is, you know... It's more, has more inertia and everything. I'm not sure I necessarily feel the need, especially since for some reason the Q and E keys control roll and they're back to front for my liking. So I'm naturally going, I'm just going to switch it back to regular mode. There we go. That's pretty cool, huh? On some surface of some alien world in some distant galaxy, we can look up into this sky and say there are more worlds here than can ever be expressed in my imagination. This is the power of procedural content. The game is still being developed. It's, it's, yeah, game. The computer application is still being developed. It's buggy. It will crash. But it keeps you coming back for more because you really can just go anywhere. Let's, uh, let's see if we can find... Let me... Uh, SS433. I wonder if that's there. Uh, okay, we ss s for three three four three three four four three three. 
Okay, well, I guess that's not there. That was one of my favorite jets. Um, oh, I need to think of something to go to! The time in the Guitar Nebula, I wonder if that's there. No, object not found. Okay, well, that's not found either. Let's go to Cygnus. Let's, if we have the Cygnus, uh, object not found, Cygnus the Swarm. Okay, let's go to Sirius, damn it. That must be in the game. There, Sirius. Let's go to the Sirius B. Go there. So we're going to fly across the galaxy again at ridiculous speeds. Oh, wow, is this putting us, like, right on the surface of Sirius? The white dwarf? That is weird. So we apparently started out on the surface of a white dwarf, getting squished into nothing. Now I wish I'd actually remembered the name of like a neutron star. There we go. So Sirius B is a white dwarf. That means it's about the same size as the planet Earth. However, it masses about the same as a star, uh, meaning the density of the material is hugely high. There was interesting there's these black spots and stuff on the surface. I wonder what if those actually exist in research or if they're um or if they're basically just embellishments added to make the thing look cool. I like the fact that it does have magnetic fields because white dwarfs do have ridiculously powerful magnetic fields. There we go. Let's go let's see if we can find Glisa. That's a good idea. The cause they had a uh, 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 uh. And I can't actually remember the name of... Let's go there. What is this? Oh yes! We have a hot desert planet around Glisa 1214 to Glisa 1214. Now where is... I'm looking for the parent. Okay, that's no good. Let's Let's go back to this. Let's turn this around so we can see where our parent body is. Ah, there we go. A nice red giant. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So we have, oh, we have these buttons at the other side. You can turn things on and off. You can, you know, work, mess around with time. You can actually make time go faster if you want things to move around. So they do actually move if you want to watch these things. Again, it's at this point, it's completely made up. This one is obviously tidally locked. But if you go to some other object, it'll rotate. I mean, nothing, you know, everything that you expect. This is just huge. You know, it's it's like, my God, it is full of stars, really. You know, <laughs> no no kidding. Um, uh, so I love this, you guys. Uh, if you're bored and looking to explore an imaginary galaxy, spaceengine.com, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. This is where I'm going to just click around. Yes, it's actually en.spaceengine.org because it's actually written by a Russian dude, Vladimir Romanyuk. i am probably mutilated his name somewhat. But uh, there is much to see and much to do, and nothing, well, as I said, everything that you can imagine is here somewhere. Let us zoom out again, because I love this zooming out into deep space. The amazing thing is that you just keep zooming out and it you know you have so much scope see it's generating galaxies in the bottom left yeah ah, like one gigaparsec per second what have we got let's go to this thing I see it moving what is this let's go there I could probably just sit and make stuff up about this. I've no idea what this is. It's RG Random Galaxy, I guess that designates. Ooh, pretty. I should actually have looked up the names of a bunch of uh, objects because be it kind of cool. Beta Lyrae. That. Let's look for that. Uh. 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 Let's see what we can do. No, it doesn't give you... I guess, oh, you can go to the different uh, M clusters. M1, let's go there. Nope. Is it going to crash? There, look. Supernova remnant. I wonder if you can find the... I wonder if... Uh, I don't see anything that appears to move around this thing. Like a... 
Looking for a neutron star. It'd be nice to find one of those. Ah! Oh. oh well. You just get the remnant on its own. So much for that. Oh, that... <laughs> I, there's supposed to be a pulsar in there, but darned if I can see it. Oh, maybe, maybe there's a way to find the remnant. Maybe if I press F2... Crab Nebula... Oh, is that the remnant? That's the Barry Center, no. Let, let's go there. Go there! It's gonna go closer to the Barry Center. I'm not sure that's gonna matter. It says it has eight planets, though. Oh, look! Yes! Neutron Star, random, blah 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 blah. Why is it taking me further out? I wanna go closer. I wanna land on this object. How about that? There, it's gonna land on a Neutron Star. And not squish me. And I can't see anything. Oh, it gives me some stars. Uh, there we go. Let's go there. Go here. Oh, yes! Oh, that looks really pretty. Dang, that's pretty. Super hot neutron star. What's the surface temperature? Temperature is... 189,000 degrees. Kelvin, of course. Diameter is 16 kilometers. Mass is uh, 1.5 solar masses. That's probably a pretty good approximation. Let's go to one of these dead planets. Brown dwarf. What's this? This is the neutron star. Let's go to this one. Let's a dead planet. We're going to just fly out and find this dead, scorched world that was too near a supernova, so it's probably black and dead because there's no heat on it. That's kind of cool. You can, of course, get down again to the surface, and I need to I need to reverse the controls because this is screwing with my head. Where's the the neutron star? Is it even there? Ah! Ooh, what is that? It's like I wonder if I go into the settings menu if I can adjust graphics auto exposure. There we go. Let's see if that gives us a better. Oh, that gives us more sky to see. It's kind of nice. I think auto exposure is tries to realistically. Oh crap! Into the surface again. Come on. There we go. I want to kind of zoom out again and see if I can find the zoom out from this thing and see if I can find the supernova remnant that's keeping it lit up. I'm not sure how I do that, actually. Should be like a brilliant point of light. That's... Ah, yeah. So if I guess if I go here... Oh, no. If I click on this and then I can look at... Is there a look at? Track object? Ah, there we go. So if I then come backwards... There! Nope, not F3. F2 to hide this. I need to turn off the tracking now. Yeah, it's like completely black because essentially we're so far from anywhere. Either that or it's been burned to a cinder. How awesome is that? What else have we got in this? Um, nope, now it's decided not to let me sh do anything. Let's, what's this out here? This is an open cluster. Let's go here. Uh, wrong button. Down here. Go! So we're going to fly to some open cluster. This is a tiny cluster of stars. ASC1... ASCC31. Uh, I don't know what the ASC designation is. Look, there's eight planets around this. Let's go here. Go to object. We can just keep doing this forever. Nice, we got a bunch of stars. Let's see, are there any planets? What is this? A temperate gas giant? Cool Selena, cool desert, frozen ice world. Let's go to the frozen ice world. Go and fly with me to the desert world. Oh, nice. I guess it just... Oh, wow, the shadow... It's eclipses and everything. I should probably slow the speed down. Look, we've got an eclipse going on. How awesome is that? Somewhere out there, there is a thing eclipsing the sun. Wherever the sun is. 
Now if I click on this, oh there, okay, so it shows me where it is. Aha! So I'm gonna just turn around and get back into Eclipse with this. Oh! Nice! So you can view all these real events happening. Do we have any... Can you see the Eclipse from the surface when you're like on... Okay, hold on. There it is there. I wonder what that looks like if I get really close in. I mean, we're gonna get the fractal landscape generator kicking in and we can... Look at that! You can watch the Eclipse like creeping across the surface. That is neat. Oh, the blackness is coming to consume us. Run, run for your lives. Ah, no, not into the surface. I said run for your lives. I'm terrible at this. It's a good thing that real spacecraft are a lot more sluggish. These ones don't give me time to think. Look, look, we are at the center of the blackness. We are covering the planet with our pitch black evil. No one can escape our shadow unless they move to the north or south. Well, anyway, this has been fun. I, I think uh, I'm going to quit this now while I'm ahead. Uh, yeah, so spaceengine.org. Lots of fun to be had. And uh, yeah, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.